Welcome to the Believe Podcast Network SoCal Sweat. My name is Ann McDaniels, a former NFL cheerleader and product manager turned actress and model who dreams of being a UFC fighter. Meow. Learning strategies to help motivate others leads me to bring you interviews each week from a range of athletes, experts in fitness and nutrition, and so much more. Thanks for listening to Believe, the number one podcast for working professionals, and let's push our endorphins to higher performance through SoCal Sweat. This is your host, Ann McDaniels, and welcome to another episode of Believe SoCal Sweat. This week's podcast is going to be about going home for the holidays or however you spend your holiday week. This is a big one. Now, I love Saturday Night Live, and do any of your holidays sound something like this? This is hosted by Eddie Murphy. It's called Home for the Holidays. It's a SNL sketch, and I just want you to hear a little snippet of Eddie Murphy as the father, and he is hosting the the Christmas Eve dinner, and here is a little snapshot of that. And again, this is from SNL, Saturday Night Live, starring Eddie Murphy. I know everyone's busy with their lives and has their own things that they have to do, but it means so much that you're here with us in our home for the holidays. And that goes for both of us. How come your damn sister couldn't host? Because my sister's house is a dump, Daniel. You know I got to pay for all this damn food? Oh, hell no! As I have always said, this house is happier when it's full. Get out the bathroom! <laughs> so you and Donna have been such gracious hosts, I just hope I haven't been a nuisance. Oh, my God. Yeah. Here's a damn girl. So that was a little snippet of a Saturday Night Live sketch comedy, which I absolutely adore. But the reason for playing that is because everybody has major expectations of the holidays. The food, the music, the way you dress, all the parties. Everybody feels that they have to be absolutely perfect, and that's impossible. So I want to just do a little tips and tricks of staying mentally healthy, not blowing a gasket (laughs) during the holiday season or during this big week of the holidays. There are so many quotes, and it's like, even Elvis Presley, he's singing about a blue Christmas without somebody, because a lot of people have gone through breakups. Maybe they've gotten divorced. Maybe they have lost people due to COVID. Maybe they're, they want to travel somewhere, and then they have to battle the Omicron and Delta virus. Who knows what that's all about right now, but it's just, it's these expectations are so high. And let's just try to stay sane during the holiday season, because at the end of the day, it is supposed to be beautiful, And if we can live in the moment and try to avoid some of these things or at least mentally prepare ahead of time, it'll make for a little bit easier of a time. So let's get right into it. I just love these comedy sketches. And any, for me, humor is always the best remedy for everything. The common areas of stress for people during the holidays are unhappy memories. Like going home for the holidays naturally makes people remember old times, the good times when you were young, when you're, maybe your parents were together and now they're divorced, or you have to go back to your hometown and you know that your ex is there and you've got to confront certain things or maybe see that person and they're married and it's unhappy memories. That's one thing. Or maybe you had previous depression or you lost somebody. How about toxic relatives? This is a huge one. Holidays can put you in the same room and you have to be and you're expected to be there. And toxic relatives can really just make you crazy with their questions or their expectations. And a lot of times it's just best to sort of dissolve the situation and say, you know what, we can talk about this later. I mean, I've gone through, I've heard everything in the book and I'm sure many of you have as well. How about what's changed? The, ho- the holidays can highlight everything that's changed in your lives. A divorce, a death in the family. Maybe someone is making their first trip back after starting college and they're completely different or people have changed. Maybe someone's become a different person as they maybe went abroad and you expected them to come back the same way and they haven't been. Or and sometimes someone came back a vegan and people are mad at them. It's just it's things that are just crazy, but it really does stress people out. And then Lord defenses during the holiday season, you're more likely to be stressed out by obligations and, and errands. So you're already a little more irritated. There's also, of course, the stress of buying, spending so much money. Maybe people have lost jobs or been downsized during the, during the COVID vaccine and the pandemic, and it's stressing people out. The money on the obvious gifts, the outfits. I know that I've been invited to about 8 million events, and it's like you have to plan outfits for everything. That can stress people out. All the spending of the food and the preparation of the food. 
And then back to the travel and the events, it's all the airlines, it's the airports, it's the car, car rentals, the hotels. And right now, with airlines having mass chaos in the air with people being violent, the COVID vaccine, people having to be tested, and all of these things, it can make people crazy. Also, how many events are you expected to go to? A lot of people say that if you have a lot, try to pick three, three big ones, and go to those and also have an exit plan. If you, maybe you're only gonna stay for an hour, or you're gonna stay for one game, or you're gonna arrive late and kind of duck out early. I'm the queen of that. Sometimes I just, I, I make sure I think the host, but if sometimes there's someone that wants to talk to you the whole time and either they're annoying or they're trying to ask you out or trying to get into your business and you just kind of slip out early. So just make a checklist of that and keep everything sort of, don't expect yourself to do everything and maintain everything for everybody because it's just not possible. And finally, a lot of people struggle with addiction, whether it be drugs, alcohol, food, sex, no matter what it is, there are so many holiday triggers, especially for alcoholics, being around all the holiday spirits, the beers, the wines, the delicious cocktails, or people that struggle with overeating or undereating. They're constantly in front of all the foods and it can really maintain, or it can really spark a lot of triggers that can put someone into a downward spiral. So really try to be on top of what you're thinking and acknowledge these things. Which leads me to what to do when you are faced with all the stress. Number one is to acknowledge your feelings. If someone close to you has recently died or you can't be with loved ones for reasons, realize that it's normal to feel sadness and grief and it's okay to take time to cry or express your feelings. You can't force yourself to be happy just because it's the holiday season and especially for everybody else. The second one is to reach out. If you feel lonely or isolated, seek out your community, religious or social events or communities. There's also, if you have a therapist, Talk to them, seek out professional help if you need to. And there are a lot of apps that can help you with, with things. And also volunteering, volunteer your time and doing something for somebody else really helps your mental sanity and makes you happier. This is my number one go-to as far as donating my time. I don't like to just give a check. I mean, I like to drop off food, but I like to spend time with people because even if I'm giving gifts or helping feed, feed at a food kitchen or the homeless, just to see the look on someone's face makes me so happy. And in, in, in hindsight, it's almost a selfish gesture, but of course I love giving back to people and helping people, but it really helps your own mental stress and sanity when you're doing something for somebody else. And be realistic. The holidays don't have to be perfect or just like last year or the year before. And especially in 2021 and 2020, everything changed. So we have to just drop expectations and everybody use the word pivot. And we all have done that. But it's like, maybe we expected this year, this Christmas to be much better than last year. And we're hitting like the same types of things with the current environment, whether it be politics, inflation. So just be realistic. They, they don't have to, the holidays do not have to be perfect or like years past when you were a child. And as families change and grow, people change. Traditions and rituals often change as well. I know personally that we've lost a major matriarch and patriarch in our family, my grandmother and grandfather. And a lot of things have changed. A lot of things have changed. And I personally was extremely close to my grandmother. And I have the loss of, of her, basically my queen as I called her. Um, it's just, it's, it's affected everybody in the family. It's definitely affected me because I was, she was like my best friend. I spoke with her every day. So it's really changed the family dynamic. So just be realistic and do what you can do. And set aside differences. I'm speaking to myself right here because it says to try to accept family members and friends as they are, even if they don't live up to your expectations. And I've learned that I have to drop expectations that I have for somebody else. And I have to realize that the expectations that someone else has upon me is not my issue. I just have to be myself and know that if, and I'm, if I'm trying to be something I'm not, then I'm, I'm not real and I, can't not, I cannot be inauthentic. I have to be real. So try to set aside those differences for a holiday feast or just being around each other and really just try to live in the moment. And when it comes to spending, try to stick to a budget. I know this is easier said than done. And obviously many of you have probably already finished your, your holiday shopping. Some of us have not started. I myself actually do better kind of chomping at the bit and being and, and having to rush with a goal. But stick to a budget. Before you do your gift and food shopping, decide how much you can afford. 
and what to spend and try to keep track of it because I do have one friend that just constantly spends and spends and spends and I'm like, how many gifts have you bought for that person? Oh, this, and I said, well, you also bought this, 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 and this. I'm like, and then she's like, oh, I, I can't, I couldn't remember that. I'm like, just lay it all out and then see if you can take some things back for credit or exchange it or just get your money back. And she actually has, and she already got $200 back for, from something that she spent on one person. You know, you can do other things. You can donate to a charity in someone's name. You can give homemade gifts or you can start a family gift exchange or you can just sponsor a family. But simple little things that you can do are go to the 99 cent store, the Dollar Tree, any kind of dollar store, buy some mugs for a dollar and put like cocoa mixes together and put a little card in there with marshmallows or coffee, you know, things that they love with maybe biscotti or a candy cane. Make it cute. You could you literally spend less than two dollars on somebody, but it would make it really special and you could customize the card for them. And it would just be really cute and it would make them feel warm and whatever it is, it's coming from you. They love you. They know that you, you took a second, you spent some time and you thought about them. And just plan ahead that way and don't feel the obligation to spend so much money because they love you. It's not about the gift, it's about the person. And even just a simple lottery ticket, that's a buck and it can be so fun to, they can scratch it off, look forward to it and then they think about you. And next, you can plan ahead. You can set aside specific days for shopping, baking, connecting with friends and other activities. Of course, a lot of this stuff has already been done, but this is a big week and things can change. And last minute scrambling will have you having to buy forgotten ingredients. Maybe they're no longer available. So anything you can do, you know, in the next couple days, just to really ramp up of what could, could go wrong, just plan that ahead. And we still have a few days left, so never fear. You know, learn to say no. Saying yes to everybody for everything, when you should say no and you want to say no, it'll leave you feeling resentful and overwhelmed. And I have done this, I've said yes, and I've, I've come to an event or a party, and I didn't want to get dressed up, I definitely didn't want to put makeup on. I don't really, I hate wearing makeup, to be honest with you. Even though I'm in the entertainment business, I really don't wear makeup at all. I mean, even the fact that I had, oh, I had to put mascara on for this, I don't want to wear mascara. I didn't want to wear heels. Um, Learn to say no because once you get there, you find that like you didn't really want to be here in the first place. Maybe you hit a bunch of traffic and I'm like, oh my God, if I had just had known in the first place, I wouldn't be irritated. And people know a fake smile and I don't want to be that way. Of course I want to be there for that person and I'm happy to be invited. So just know that if you listen to your gut instinct, it's usually the right thing to do. And also don't abandon your healthy habits. It's really good to stay on top of your goals because if you overeat or overdrink and you don't get enough sleep or exercise, that's a huge thing and it kind of makes you, it kind of puts you in a downward spiral. So don't let the holidays become a free for all. Try to plan some things where you can stay on track, like have a healthy snack, a snack or a big breakfast before holiday meals so that you don't go overboard on sweets, cheese, drinks, you name it. Also, Try to drink a big glass of water before you start the feast. That will help you become more full in the beginning and then you won't go crazy. Eat healthy meals during the week. Get plenty of sleep. It's always recommended to get seven to nine hours. Impossible, I know, but try to, try to get extra sleep, which is, again, very difficult, but put some time in, even if you can take a little nap. Include regular physical activity into your daily routine. And that would just be walking outside for 10 minutes. Get outside. Try to deep breathing exercises, meditation, or yoga. And try to avoid excessive tobacco, excessive alcohol, excessive drug use, ex excessive eating. That'll make you feel bad about yourself and that'll just ruin the holiday season in general. And be aware of how the information culture can produce undue stress. Social media, the comparisons. Oh my God, look at their tree. Look at their meal. Look at what she's wearing. Oh, she looks so good. I don't look good. Or, you know, if they're coming right there and then they're on their phones constantly with, on their social media. And then you feel like you, you should be. And then people want to take a picture. I cannot stand sometimes. I just, I don't really love posting on social media. I don't love it, but I know I have to. But sometimes a friend will, will take a picture next to me and then they will doctor that photo up. I mean, I saw a girl that I worked with as a, we were modeling together. She went to the mirror and she spent an hour and a half of taking selfies, I'm, I kid you not, because we were waiting on this, we were waiting on another model to finish hers and we were going in an hour and a half. And then I said, how many did you take? How many selfies did you take? She took like 300. And I said, what are you gonna do with those? Oh, I'll pick the best one. And then I'll spend about an hour and a half doctoring that up. 
what a waste of time. So then you feel like you should be doing that. And I'm like, oh, hell no, I'm not doing that. That is like ridiculous. But no, again, when you're comparing yourself to people on social media, it is not real. None of this stuff is real. So try to not get on social media and compare and contrast everything. And also all these happy families, all these, all these healthy couples, maybe you had broken up with somebody and they're new on social media with somebody else. Take, just get it rid of it. Get rid of it, block them, whatever you have to do because it'll make you crazy and make you so sad and then, and then everything's ruined. And then take a breather. Again, make some time for yourself. Get away. Sometimes, like I am an, a huge extrovert, but when I am done, I am done and I need to be introverted like a hermit. And then I can go back out and be fabulous again with everybody, with my energy levels and you know, making time for them. But if you need to take time for yourself and it's important to you, please do it. Whether it be a bubble bath, a hot shower, getting your own workout in, taking a walk at night and just looking at the stars, maybe laying on the ground, just getting into nature, listening to soothing music or reading a book. You know, or just spending some time with friends that you want to be with. Again, your friends and your family are not people that you pick. And yes, you love them, but it's not like you would want to hang out with them every day. Some families are extremely close, almost to the point of enmeshment, which is a little weird and cult-like, but no judgment. I know that I'm very close to my family, but this year there have been some things that I'm, I'm setting up some boundaries and... I'm taking myself away and I am choosing not to fly home for the holidays. There are several other issues. I'm still healing and I really don't want to battle the airports and the cold with, you know, with still healing my leg and everything, but I needed to take a step back this year and I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff with friends, a lot of charity work, and it's a great decision and I'm sticking to it. But again, if you really are having issues, seek professional help if you need it. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, despite your best efforts, no matter what you do, Sometimes you may find yourself feeling persistently sad or anxious, plagued by physical complaints, unable to sleep, you're super irritable and hopeless, and you're unable to face even routine chores or even getting up in the morning. If these feelings last for quite some time, talk to your doctor or mental health professional. And again, if you don't have insurance or you can't afford it, there are many people on sliding scales and even a lot of shelters will offer these things. I personally did a big event last night, a big holiday party, and all the proceeds went to the House of Ruth. And that is a domestic violence shelter for whom I've done a lot of work with as far as volunteering and also have made many donations. And they offer lots of mental health for people that maybe have struggled with leaving a husband, leaving a wife. And, you know, people, people offer resources. And again, there are many apps and there are many people on Instagram that offer free advice as well. But really, don't let the holidays become something you dread because you really can live in the moment and have a wonderful time with people. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it is, should be fun. There's wonderful, beautiful music. The smells and the taste. I mean, just the smell of a Christmas tree. The smell of a fireplace. That's what I absolutely love. I have a quote-unquote fireplace in my place. Again, I live in L.A. And it is one of those very... Um, ultra modern where you hit a button and it turns blue but there's no there's no heat coming off of that I guess if you sit inside it you can feel a little bit of heat but sometimes I just put a bunch of candles in there to pretend that that is an actual fireplace which is a smell of burning wood oh I just love it and I'm originally from Wisconsin and I just love the smell of I just remember my grandpa and my um, uncle just cutting wood cutting down trees and I used to log with my dad we would cut out cut down trees and that was in the summer but the smell of the burning logs, that is one of my favorite things to smell, um, besides a uh, race car exhaust, which is very strange, but anyway. Um, but find, find happiness somewhere and live in the moment. Get off social media, laugh, watch dumb holiday movies. I love Elf. I can watch that. I can watch Elf over and over and over again. Or if you're into the Hallmark or Lifetime movies and you can have an escape, watch that but do realize that is a hollywood version of what a holiday is don't compare yourself to the people on hallmark or lifetime it they're wonderful escapes but they're so sappy and you almost expect that same thing like for example i uh, i made myself watch one the other day because it actually even though i make fun of it yes i have to say i do like it and um a girl was going home for the holidays with her fiance and she realized she was still in love with her ex and she ended up getting back involved with her ex and it was the best decision she ever did was to leave her fiance and go back to him 
But what if that doesn't happen? What if you're pining over an, an ex and you think that's gonna happen for you too and it doesn't? And then you think that Hallmark movie is just a farce, which it is. I mean, sometimes this stuff does happen, but try to not compare yourself to social media, Hallmark movies, or Lifetime movies, <laughs> when it's actually more like the SNL skits. But anyway, I hope this gave you some, some tips and tricks just to manage the stress. I mean, realize that you can't force yourself to be happy. And if you're not happy, acknowledge it and get some help. But do realize that you are human and that you're not perfect and you can't do it all. The people that think that they can do it all or say they can do it all are lying. It's impossible. You can't have everything. But in the meantime, be happy, be merry, and indulge in things that you love. And please know that, again, this podcast makes me so happy just to do the research. It helps me just like it helps with any tips and tricks that you may hear. But leave a comment if there's anything that you can share with people. And please know that you are loved by everybody. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you've done, your family and your friends still love you. So drop those expectations of yourself because I think you're fabulous. So thank you again for joining me on another episode of SoCal Sweat. And I hope you have a wonderful big week. This is a big week for everybody. And then we're going to go into New Year's Eve. And um, I just wanted to wish you guys a wonderful holiday season. And I can't wait to hear about your favorite foods, your favorite drinks, and just have a fabulous, wonderful time. Thanks again. We appreciate you for listening. And please rate and subscribe to the show on iTunes. You can also listen on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Luminary Tuned In, or at Believe.com. You can reach out to me anytime for any questions or issues or topics you'd like covered on the show at Ann McDaniels or at Ann McDaniels Actress. And I will see you next time on Believe SoCal Sweat.